Okay, so creating a landing page in Foundry Virtual Tabletop, really quick and simple. Things you're gonna need, modules. The ones that I'm going to use in this video are Monk's Active Tile Triggers, Trigger Happy, Forian's Quest Log, Lock View, and Simple Calendar. So the Forian's Quest Log is used for the quest portion of this little book here. Simple Calendar is used for this. And then Lock View kind of sets your bounding box and the other two are to set up the triggers for when you click things. So first things first, we'll set up our scene. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a new scene and I'll call this LP2, just for example, landing page two, I'll put that in my general scenes. Great. So setting it all up, uh, show and navigation. I like everybody to be able to see this. You wanna name it something convenient and obvious. So maybe you just call it landing page. So that way up at the top here, whenever a player wants to go to the landing page, they can just click on the landing page. Super awesome. The hardest part of setting up your landing page will definitely be setting up your background. Um, setting up your background involves kind of picking how you want your layout to be. So that's all the setup of the actual scene. So this one is kind of a wooden table with a book, some cards, a timepiece, two maps and a candle and some coins and a quill and whatnot. So to do that, you kind of want to use Photoshop or whatever art program you have at your disposal. I also added these little character card tokens so people could see their characters and we use that on our landing page. Next thing you want to do is go to your grid. We're going to set that to gridless because I don't use tokens on the landing page. Um, I guess you could if you wanted to. Personally, I don't. Token vision and fog exploration will take both of those off because we're not going to use tokens. So we want the entire scene to be visible and we're not using fog. So we don't need to have fog exploration. Next thing is going to be your ambience. This is where you'll set up your music or your sounds or whatever weather effects, that kind of thing. Lock view. Lock view will stop your players from looking all over and ruining their immersion in the gray space of foundry. So for this one, I like to enable the bounding box, exclude the sidebar and blacken it. I leave pan and zoom allowed so that players can like zoom in and like look, get a little closer look at certain things if they want to. And I'll hit save changes and then I'll go ahead and I'll activate the new scene. So this is what it looks like when you first start out. You can't click on anything and nothing really does anything. So first things first, we're going to go to our tile controls. We're going to go to place a tile and we'll start with the map at the top. So we'll go ahead and we'll drag this out. We'll put a map and we'll then select a picture. The picture we'll use is going to be a transparent PNG. So it has to be a file type that supports transparency. PNG does, and it's just going to be a blank tile. So if you want to make your own or just go on Google and look up transparent PNG or something like that, and we'll use that for our tile. So now that we've selected the picture for the tile, we are gonna go through the options. Overhead, we don't need to use this. Animation, we're not doing an animation. And triggers, this is where all the meat of the landing page is. So we want it to be active, so this is gonna be able to be used. Uh, restricted tokens, we're gonna allow everyone to use it. Controlled by anyone. And when is gonna be on click. So when someone clicks on this, I want them to view the map. All right, so when the game's paused, do I want to allow this? Sure. Um, hover over pointer, it, I like to enable it so that way when you're hovering over, it'll make it clear that it's something you can click on and the chance to trigger is 100% because I want it to happen every time someone clicks on the map. Actions, this is kind of where we set up the trigger for when you click on it, what happens. So we'll create a new action and we want to change scene. So whenever someone clicks on this, the action will trigger and it will change the scene and the scene it will change to is gonna be our Clovis Concord map. So over here in our map section, you can see that I've already set up the Clovis Concord map and the empire map and activate, you leave this one unchecked because if you have it set to activate, that means that when someone clicks on this, it'll turn that map into the active scene, which will pull everybody to it. But if you leave it unchecked and we'll go ahead and we'll create the tile, you can see here at the landing page is the active scene. We click on the map, it'll pull us to the Clovis Concord map, but it doesn't make it the active scene. And that's really helpful for like keeping everyone where they want to be instead of having everyone be able to pull everyone else around with them. Awesome, so that's our first one. The second one is kind of the same thing. So you would just replicate those steps, but select a different scene. Uh, we'll move on to the character, um, 
character sheet like opening tile. So we'll go ahead and we'll create a new tile. We'll make it on top of crime here, one of the players in one of my games. And we'll go ahead and select the transparent PNG again. A lot of the same setup applies. Um, and we'll go ahead and allow everyone to use it. It doesn't matter who does it. And we'll set this one to on click as well. Allow it when paused, hover over pointer. And then for our actions, we'll do this one a little differently. This one will open an actor sheet. And you can see you can't click on here anymore to get a drop down. What you have to do instead is you want to select an entity. So we'll go over here, we'll go to our PCs so that we can see our character. And we'll select this little option here, which is select an entity, you know, kind of minimize stuff. But then you go and you click on the name and it'll populate that field. So and then show to we want this to be only shown to triggering player. So we'll update, create the new tile. And you can see when we hover over it, we get the mouse. And if we click, it'll pop open that character sheet. That is something that you would then replicate across all your character tokens or character images if you wanted that functionality. Now, this is kind of the basics of what you can do. The quest log is a similar thing. Um, the notes or the campaign notes is also the same. You would just create it, but instead of doing it for a change scene, you would have it open map. The quest log is a little different. It makes use of Forian's quest log, and I'll go ahead and just show that off on here. So if you click on here, it opens up that quest log. The way that works is this is just a picture. This one has no functionality. If I go over to the triggers and the actions, you can see it doesn't actually have an action. This is just here as like a visual aid, like this is the quest. If you go ahead and click on this main sheet, which is there's another active tile, it actually opens the quest log. And what that one looks like, if we go ahead and we open that one up, is you can see the triggers active on click. So whenever someone clicks on it, but what it does is it opens FQL quest log for triggering player. So that option is actually down here at the bottom. So if you scroll up here, these are the ones we were using for the change scene. And there's actually a bunch more. You can pause the game, you can run macros, you can do lights, sounds, whatever you want to do. There's a lot of functionality you can do for your landing page, but this one's just open FQL quest log. The notes one is uh, very similar, but it's just open a journal and then you would select it the same way you do the player character. You'd hit this little button and you would go to your journal and campaign notes. So here, then here, and then update, save. And when you click on that one, it'll pull open your campaign notes if you wanted to have something like that. The only one that's a little more complicated on my landing page is the um, simple calendar. So whenever anybody clicks on this timepiece, it'll actually pull open this calendar. And the way that's done is by a macro. So on this little folder icon down here near your hotbar, you can see this is the, your macros directory. You can then create macros. And the one that I have for the calendar is this one here. Just named it calendar, simple calendar dot API dot show calendar parentheses. That's it. When this is run, it pops open the calendar. So the way you would set that up is you would have your tile and you would go to your triggers and you're on click still, but your action is a run macro action. And then you would select the calendar like this. And that's how that one works. And other than that, that's my entire landing page. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. If anyone has any questions or wants to see anything else that you can do in Foundry, let me know. And yeah, have a nice day.